Hello and welcome to part 4 of the series on computer networks. I hope you have watched the previous parts of this series and if not you can always check out the previous part the link is given in the description. So this series will consist of 15 marks in total in your final examination. So and today's point of discussion is your cloud. So let us try to understand what cloud is. So whenever you hear the word cloud do not think that it is a very complex term or a very complex topic so cloud it is a general term which refers to nothing but the internet so if someone says that uh, i'm doing something over the cloud then he or she is referring to the internet that means he or she is referring that he or she is doing some work over the internet so related to the term cloud we have a term which is known as your cloud computing so let us try to understand what cloud computing so see cloud computing is internet based computing this term is these three words are very important it refers to internet based computing means here whatever see normal computing means what suppose you want to write a python program to add two numbers you will write the program in your machine in your computer and it can be down then even when your computer is not connected to the internet but if you are going to do some program over the cloud that means you need to be connected to the internet and use use some cloud service which offers python programming language so it is a internet based computing whereby shared resources software and information are provided to computers and other services on demand so through with the help of this computing Resources can be shared. Resources means these documents, videos, audios, all these are known as resources. Resources can be shared, software can be shared, and information can be provided to computers and other devices on demand. For example, suppose let's say this is your computer and it is not connected to the internet. Now, let's say you have made a Microsoft Word document the name of the document is let's say abc.docx you have typed your document and after typing it you have saved it to that particular document after that suppose you move to a different place let's say that place is 10 kilometers away from the other computer now if you want the document abc.docx is there any way to get that document from this computer without you physically going to that computer again no there is no way of doing it why because you are not you were not making or storing the document in the cloud you were storing the document in the local machine now suppose you use the services of a cloud cloud means it is an internet based computing so you will make this document you may make this document on the local machine and then you will store that document in the cloud if you store that document in the cloud even after come moving to a different place which is 10 kilometers away or 100 kilometers or even 1000 1000 kilometers away you will be able to access your document abc.docx without physically visiting that location again so i think now you are clear about the big advantage which cloud computing offers next It enables user to store, retrieve and access data on the cloud. So as I have given you an example, you can store data when required, you can retrieve data and even you can modify data on the cloud if you want. So I hope it is clear, this terms are clear. Next, it can also be used for programming. So cloud also enables programmer to program on the cloud. Let's say you want to do Python. Ideally in your home computer Python will be installed, but suppose you move to a different location in and in that location Python is Not installed and you don't want to Download it and then install it again. So instead of that you can Use the services of a cloud. So there are various platforms which allows you to program Python on the cloud So one such website is which is given here. It may not be visible. So I'll write it here again. It is www python anywhere.com if you just go to this website you can do programming in python instantly 
without even installing Python in your computer. Similarly, various other cloud services are available. Next, so Python Anywhere com can be used for python 3 programming now let's go to the different types of clouds so the first type of cloud is your private cloud so what is private cloud suppose i have an organization and in that organization there are 50 employees so let's say i have an organization and in that organization i have let's say my, the name of my organization is a and in that organization let's say i have 100 employees and for collaborating among those 100 employees i can buy a cloud service and make collaboration among all these employees so if that cloud service is accessible only to the employees of the organization a then it is called as a private cloud so in case of a private cloud cloud only the persons from that particular organization is able to use that service for example in the diagram you can see this is organization one this is organization two so organization one has its own cloud service and organization two has its own cloud service organization one will not be able to access the services of cloud services of organization two and vice versa so the clouds that are used and controlled exclusively by a single organization are called private clouds next we go to the next type of cloud which is called public cloud so what is public cloud so in case of public cloud those services can be used the services of cloud can be used by anyone it's there is no eligibility con condition that you need to belong to this organization or that organization to be able to use those services so these services are rendered over a network that is open for public use this increases the scalability and availability of the applications so if the cloud service is public then obviously there will be more number of users and when there will be more number of users this increases the scalability now what is the meaning of the word scalability scalability means more users can be added for example if i buy a private cloud and uh, let's say the limit of that private cloud is 10 so now if 11 employees come into that organization then he or she will not be able to use the services of the cloud but in case of a public cloud if i use the services of a public cloud then let's say during the starting of the public cloud there were 100 people using the uh, cloud service now after a few days let's say another 20 persons came now it will be scalable means without affecting the services of the previous 100 users it can be extended to more 20 users okay so this is called scalable scalable means increasing the services even if the uh, number of people increases so these are some examples of cloud services so as you can see this is your google drive this is your google drive is by google and this is your icloud icloud is by apple so if you have iphone ipad or macbook you can uh, store your data in icloud next is dropbox and this is onedrive onedrive is by microsoft so i recommend you to use the services of cloud specifically the most convenient one which i find is google drive so uh, you should always store your important documents files or videos in google drive so for that you do not uh, require even a new account also so you you can just log in into your gmail account and you can go to a website called www.drive.google.com and then log in with the same account with which you log in into gmail or youtube why the same account will be used because google drive is by google only so there you can store your important documents and files and you can access it anywhere you can access it even through mobile also suppose you are making it in a computer let's say a in your school and then 
let's say B is the computer in your home after uh, suppose let's say you make a Python program let's say a.py in your school and store it in the in Google Drive and then even after reaching home you can access that program in your own home computer which is very convenient next is community cloud so community cloud shares infrastructure between several organizations from a specific community with common concerns suppose there is an organization let's say a and there is a different organization let's say b now suppose the organization a and b want to collaborate on something so for collaboration what they require they require the use of a common cloud service so what they can do both these organizations both these organizations a and b can share a single cloud service so remember if more than one organization shares a single cloud service it is known as community cloud next is hybrid cloud so what is hybrid cloud by the name only it is evident that in case of a hybrid cloud the organization will use the services of its own private cloud so let's so this is what this is your private cloud and also the services of public cloud okay so suppose the organization wants to keep certain things confidential and much more securely then it can use the services of private cloud but if that organization wants to communicate with some general public then they can use the services of public cloud also so as more than one type of clouds are used here so we can say it to be a hybrid cloud so it is a composition of private and public clouds such composition expands deployment options for cloud services allowing it organizations to use public cloud computing resources to meet temporary needs okay so that's all with cloud so i hope if you do not use cloud services yet you can uh, obviously use the cloud services of any of the public clouds which i discussed here so let's meet in the part five of the series on computer networks thank you very much